recording. Don't touch anything. All right. <laughs> now I'm on the screen. All right. Um, so welcome to session zero of our new Starfinder campaign. It's been a long time since we played a rules crunchy system. Woo. 4E, going back the better part of a decade. Um, I, think, I, I think I know I'm excited. I hope everybody else is excited. We're going to be playing the Dead Suns uh, yeah. path to start, the adventure path. And we'll play that till we tire, or till we hate Starfinder, or till we decide we want to roll our own. So basically, so, it's it until it's dead. We'll find something better. Yes. So this is session zero. We're going to talk about whatever he wants to play. A few house rules I'd like to talk about, and that's about it. We are going to miss um, one of our players. Joel is saving the world uh, elsewhere. So he's blessed the rains down in Africa. Yes. So I uh, twist the came back to Adam, and you guys have your. Conversation over who's going to play what. Okay, so we were talking about how uh, Mikey typically plays a halfling rogue, and uh, Mike, do you want to do you want to let us try and guess what your uh, what you're going to play, what you're looking at playing for this adventure? Yes, you guys can go ahead and guess. I actually have Jeff, what? three. Three. Well, your most typical and most preferred. I, I was going to go with definitely a. Uh, uh, a Vesk icon. You're such a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, a Vesk envoy icon. Oh my god, that's so close to my third one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you actually roll up a character for your uh, Yosoki operative? So, yes. So, <laughs> that would be the easy one, right? I mean, I can fall yeah. into that role without even, like, thinking about anything. Yep. And there is flanking. There is, there is. I mean, it's got like everything. I got everything that I dream about in my rogue characters. It's a trick attack, a sneak attack. <clears throat> it's uh, it's it's. I mean, it, it's good. It's fun. It's easy to do. But I didn't want to pick anything honestly until I kind of had an idea of what everybody else was thinking as well because <laughs> it's very easy, like. You know, I mean, there's some, there's some pretty cool, you know, like Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter sounds like an awesome kind of thing, except when you're trying to, like, be part of a group. And yet you're always trying to go off and, like, hunt this bounty thing if nobody else is part of it. That's true. Well, yeah. Bounty Hunter isn't always a person. You know, it could be a... Could be a bounty? A, a, a computer program that was stolen or... Something like that, you know what I mean? Like... So, while we are playing an adventure path, how can we get a camera? <laughs> while we got to playing an adventure path, I'm more than happy to entertain some character development. If like you all have something related to the Starfinder Society, whether you're joining it, maybe your father was a member, he disappeared, and you're trying to track him down. There's no reason you couldn't have a bounty on one of you, or one of you be chasing somebody else's bounty. So there's there's all kinds of things we can play with. Um, one of the things that I think we learned last game was it's not necessarily helpful to keep secrets from other players. It's much easier if you tell the other players so we can work that in um, to the story and they can help support where you want to go. We have, say, we have to work on a metagaming for that. I say even, if the, even the players at a meta level, even if the characters don't know, we should let the players know. Yes. Agree. <clears throat> and we'll talk about how we should metagame less shortly. But for now, <laughs> so Mikey, what else were you looking at? Because, yeah, we had you pegged for your Sophie operative, but if you wanted to do something different from that, I think that would be fantastic. I, I mean, I'm, I'm totally fine playing that role if that's a role that needs to happen without a doubt. It, 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 it doesn't sound like we need an operative. It sounded like they were They're the very guys. overpowered as far as, like, they have a lot of skills. They have skills that are going to end up being better than, like, you could have a mystic who's doing like a magic check or something like that. And like the operative has just as high of a, oh, of a yeah. bonus on uh, like a ton of skills wise, at least. So, so Bob, what were you thinking? Uh, guys, I really haven't figured it out yet. I, nothing's totally calling to me. So I suspect once you guys pick, I'll fill in whatever spot, whatever role we're missing and go that way. Uh, the so, only thing I will say though, it would be kind of interesting Oftentimes, our characters come from different backgrounds with not a lot of history with each other. 
So I'd be up if any of you guys were game for playing a character that has a connected history with another uh, character. Like, I don't know if they would be related or they fought in a war together. Uh, uh, like uh, when Mikey and I came up with our, our characters who were brothers in Deadlands. <laughs> and I killed one in the first week. And then, yeah, and then you killed one of them in the first oh, week. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Except so, so much, so much not getting killed. Kind of, so much for the whole kind of building a backstory, Josh. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, I I was pretty set that I could do it, but I was gonna I wanted to play something a little different. So I was thinking playing an envoy uh, and either a Lashunta Devaya or a Yasoki as the uh, race for them. And your theme? Uh, maybe an icon. Okay, and I kind of weigh uh, either a Xeno Seeker or Space Fair. So, so for those of you who have read Dragonlance, Xeno Seeker is without a doubt cast off for a foot. Because <laughs> he wants to meet everybody. Yeah. Um, okay. So one thing... Well, if you haven't read Dragonlance, Dragonlance go read it. <laughs> Just uh, you know that it's 30 years old. I'm not 14 years old anymore. Right? It's still not bad. Oh, so. really? Okay. So one of the other things I want to try is... I want to add not so much the old wandering monster encounter, but there are places I can stick an encounter that doesn't need to have a violent resolution. Like it can be, I know, <laughs> you could intimidate them away. You could the uh, the fame the of the icon, boy will uh... the, the envoy can miss them. Otherwise, the fame of the icon and getting some pictures with them could dismiss the situation. Or I maybe have a add... physical encounter with the icon. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> so. There are I mean, obviously there'll be encounters that we won't be able to avoid. You know, you have to you have to fight them. But there are some that I would like to, to try to have others resolution. So it only takes five minutes instead of fifty-five. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go back to work picking. How long it, how, it doesn't take us twenty-seven minutes to open the door? <laughs> <laughs> I am going to move the camera around a lot quicker now. <laughs> hey, the door can be trapped, man. <laughs> well, where are you going to stand? And, okay, I'll stand behind. The the trap could be trapped, and then that <laughs> trap could be trapped. We'll have, to, we'll have to keep a series of walls within our uh, uh, docking base. So we can move those up in oh, yeah. front of Clear a door that we have. Clear at a time. <laughs> and then move that up, open that door, move it up. That's a good idea. All right, back to taking characters, please. So uh, I've got some ideas for a mystic and for a soldier, uh, but I'm open to playing anything that, that we need. So it feels like we're all just going to dance around each other until we settle on something. <laughs> Well, well, let's talk about what we do need. It's true. Do we do we need a tank? Do we do we need a healer? Do we need? It's hard to say. Because I, I, it, it, like looking, reading through some of the uh, uh, setting and stuff, it's like you could be on a, on a planet where you need you're you're coming into encounters. You could be going from ship to ship. You could be on a space station. So all these things need. Different things. So let, let me tell you, I'll give you, I'm not going to call them spoilers, but we're playing the Dead Sons Adventure Path. It is meant to be a tour of Pathfinder setting. I'm only about the first couple, but you, you visit a couple of different places. It is at least as much investigative as it is combat. So there are, there's plenty of, there's ample room for skills, both computer, investigative, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be honest. When I when I started trying to like look and and put characters together, I I immediately went towards the Firefly show uh -huh. and the characters that were on the ship, right? So the other two characters that really intrigued me, other than you know Jane's character, which would really be like the <laughs> character, right? So the the other two characters that really intrigued me were. Um, Kaylee and Hoban, right? So your pilot and your mechanic. <laughs> I, I would think we would need a mechanic. I don't, I, I don't and, know how that is, but it seemed like your group needs a mechanic. Well, I mean, you know, obviously you're on a ship, right? So you need both. But I think the operative skills can kind of cover that. Like, you don't need a, a mechanic class, an engineer class, I don't think. Because you can get engineering to fix the ship. Right, you don't you don't need to have a mechanic to fix the ship. Okay, I'm just thinking. I, I thought I read somewhere when, if you're in a 
starship to starship battle, you need a mechanic. No, you. He's the only one who could. You designate somebody engineering to fix stuff. But it doesn't I thought he was the only one who could fix things quickly. Everybody else could fix things. He was the only one who could fix things quickly. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. That, that's kind of Jeff, Jeff. That's the way I kind of read it and understood it. Um, and then obviously the other the other one that I thought about was. Um, the the same kind of race that you are talking about, um, but more of like an Indiana Jones kind of the Xeno archaeologist. So outside the original ones, kind of like an explorer, um, but yet a badass explorer. What class would he be? Though? You don't make it an operative. I was say, that's still an operative. That, that works as an operative. Yeah, absolutely. It works as a, a non combat focused operative. Well, the operative has so much non-combat, they can do both. Yeah. Because they have so many skills. And that, that, that's, <laughs> that's an Indiana Jones investiga- investigator. Yeah, kind, kind of like that line, right? It's, but it's also, really right, right yeah. but also not necessarily stab somebody in the back, kind of roguish, but, you um, know, not not willing to give up what he finds, right? Yeah, but, but it's, it's not backstabbing now. It's sneak it. It's it's a trick attack. So you're perfectly okay. It's different. <laughs> totally. It's different. <laughs> and you know what? I'm just gonna create. I'm just gonna create the original character. <laughs> I mean, since everything's named, since everything's named differently, it's really not actually the same character. <laughs> Fire. Fire <man. laughs> I mean, you know, so and like I said, the other the other character that I was thinking of was the pilot character, right? Somebody who knows how to fly this thing, right? But I mean, the pilot is still um, the pilot is a theme, so you, any anybody can be the pilot. No, no, no. I, yes, I agree with you. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying those are kind of the themes that I was looking at to get away from the traditional theme that I would normally gravitate towards. Right, well, so that Xeno archaeologist, although yes, you can kind of play that under the operative role, it's actually its own separate theme. Well, you can play any theme on any class. Yeah. Yes. Uh, somebody pick. Bob, any ideas? Uh, so if we're seeing Jeff is possibly an envoy. Not for you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at what's missing, right? So, I, I'm an envoy. Go ahead. Oh, confirmed. Okay. Adam, either mystic or soldier. Mike, badass explorer. Indiana Jones, maybe operative, maybe pilot. So the stuff we have left over then. Uh, does the Is the mystic the healer? I'm trying to recall. I think the mystic is the healer. <laughs> uh, all, uh, Bob, it seems like magic is magic. And so you could, fo- if you have magic abilities, you could be magic user, wizard, cleric, whatever you want. That's okay. right. That's right. The other thing to take into account, um, two things. One, I found an interesting thread where they talk about the mystic healing, and most people say the envoy healing stamina points is much more useful than the mystic healing hit points. Was, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And the other side of the coin is. Dex is way more important than it ever was in any of the game system because it affects both your targeting and your net and your armor oh, class. Right. And that strength wasn't that important. Strength is almost a dumb stat unless you have a melee character. Oh, uh, another question for the party composition. Will Jules be joining us? And I thought well, I heard I that she might be interested as a technomancer. Is that she right? has some interest in the technomancer, but she's realizing right now, at least for the next few weeks, her course load does not allow her to join us. So do not worry about her. And I think if she did join us, she'll play anything. Making her a tank would be easiest, right? I don't think she, I don't think she would. She, I don't think that's what she'd want to play though. Okay. Yeah. But she, she has options. Pick what you want to pick. Don't worry about her. Okay, so we have an envoy. You still have to pick your race and your theme. Yep. Mystic. Well, if you're going to be an envoy, I think I would go. If you've got healing covered, I could be tank, like sort of healing. And keep keep everybody else from getting hit, pretty much. So what you want to play though? I like yeah. it. <laughs> I don't oh, want so, to take away from what somebody oh, else so wants. Oh, so you could do that, correct? Yeah. Adam, are you gonna you're gonna play a tank? <laughs> I know. Go figure. 
I was on recording. Bob, maybe you should be the envoy, and I'll be the uh, guest action. Firebeat. I'll be the firebeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be the firebeat. Uh, actually, Jeff, envoy <laughs> is super close to being warlord, and I am steering away from that this time. So that's all you, well, my friend. to put us back into our original... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. You're totally right. Yep, I missed the joke. It went right over my head. <laughs> I, Bob, I'm surprised. I thought you were going to jump on either the mechanic or the Solarian. Because they both have some different mechanics that we've seen before. Yeah, I think that's what I'm leading because I don't think I've heard uh, either of those two mentioned. So maybe put me down for one of those. Well, I, I mentioned mechanic and oh, then everybody sorry. said you don't need a mechanic, so... You, sorry. It's not that you didn't need one. It yeah, was, you're welcome to play one. It's just it's yeah. not a required role. Yeah. We didn't want you to pick it because you felt we needed it. And you do get that yeah. secondary, like, uh, what is like an AI type thing that goes with you? Everyone is a drone. Yeah. What's it, or a drone. The, the AI, AI thing is something. almost entirely just mechanical um, bonuses to hit. Perfect. Yeah, but from a role play perspective, you could get it a you could make it R two. You know, your sidekick. It could be a separate voice, like a different character even. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, Bob's in a figure with himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that won't slow down combat or anything. Uh, yeah, my my vision for the soldier was going to be he was actually going to focus on reach weapons. And his goal was going to be more to control the front line to make sure that the guys in the back didn't get hit. Uh, because, you know, when you get ranged and uh, spellcasters, in, you know, when they get engaged in melee, it's not good. So my goal is to use a ranged weapon or use a reach weapon and keep uh, melee guys from getting to you guys, hmm. to guys in the back. I don't know how well it would work, but that's the goal. So speaking of Indiana Jones, he's going to start with a tack lash, which is basically a whip. <laughs> Along with a big ass gun. That sounds really cool. And a big hammer. No, a long sword. He's got a long sword. He's got an actual friggin' long sword. That glows in the dark because it's lit up. Oh, no, it just says long sword in the book. I can make it glow in the dark if you want. Thunder sword. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're looking at Jeff as an envoy. Yep. Adam as a soldier. Do you have a race? Uh... It's going to be. You got to do it's, best. It's got to be best. <laughs> I thought so. The, the the synergies there are too good. And you're not going to do best anything else. <sighs> so I sent you guys a link today with the character with some uh, character creation shortcut. It has all the bonuses and stuff on there, so that will help you pick a race in a class. <coughs> it still hasn't helped. <laughs> it missed it all in one place. Yeah, no, that's true. All right, so Adam is locked in a two out of his three. Do you have a team already? Uh, yeah, something with strength based. So, Mikey, what if you do the Indiana Jones? Is that human then? Is that android? Something different? Yeah, I, I got it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it, I was kind of leaning towards either human or android on that one, to be honest. The uh, android, when you read the android, it's. It's different than what I expected. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting, right? So, um, you know, originally I kind of I kind of thought the uh, um, because you know, like in there, where it talks about Android, right, right? They're not like what we consider what I would think an Android is, right? Where it's completely. Um, you know, machine, right? It's not. It's not data. There's a little. There's a little magic to it. There's a little soul to it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's not data. Exactly. So, um, I, you know, like I said, I, I don't know. I mean, humans are obviously easy to play, but, um, dude, you're playing sci-fi. Play the rat guy. <laughs> I was gonna play the rat guy. Well, play the rat guy. I don't care. I don't know which one I should do. Play, play a different rat. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just teasing, but I want you to play what you want to fly. I want you to, you know, experiment. Uh, I got the impression that androids in this game aren't really data. They're more Mark Zuckerberg, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, that's, and, a great, that's a great way to put that, Bob. Yes. I, I will make the statement, you know, we're trying this out. If we get three sessions in and you don't like what you have, 
drop it and revamp it. Build a new one, change it out, change the entire premise, I don't care. Tip your tray. I want you to, yeah, I want you to try it all. You know, try what you want to try. This is learning a system for us, too. But may I suggest, if you decide you get tired of your character, secretly speak to Josh and get killed in a very dramatic manner to the shock of everybody else. <laughs> and then shockingly have a character back up. Ready there you to, go. Uh, yes. We've done that before. And, then, and uh. then the rest of the party can avenge your death. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, um, okay, so, <clears throat> so it's, it sounds like this adventure is kind of, like, half exploratory, half combat-based, so although combat is, and combat seems very interesting in this, um, world, I guess. So it's, it's going to be a lot more range than, we're, than we've typically seen in fantasy? Yeah. Yeah, everything seems ranged. And at the same time, grenades make you move. And I have to reread the rules on grenades, but I may use them as a means to force you to move, where a grenade shows up and it goes off after you, um, after your turn. So if you don't move, the grenade goes off and injures you. That may be a house full head to read up on grenades. So. But I want to make sure that the, it doesn't just degenerate into pew pew, pew pew. You know, you just everybody just rolls their dice, and, and nobody actually ever moves. My, my character is built around breaking that. Yes, it is. <laughs> and my my character's powers are to help people with that. Okay, around that, you know. Then I'll stop talking about that. Keep in the back of your mind. If you find that combat's getting static, you can introduce it later. Right. Yeah. So, Mike, do you know what class you want to do? No. Not anymore. Now I'm completely like I had four ideas written down, and I have no idea what I want to do now. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what were your ideas? Because any of them could be that Indiana Jones type. If, if we just because I mean, like right Solarian way. soldier operative, uh, all those could be, even mechanic could be a uh, Indiana Jones theme. Yeah, it's literally like those are the themes, not the classes. I guess exactly what they're trying yeah. to get at. You know. So what do you what what do you what did you have written down, Mike? So I had um, I had the operative the Yoshi, uh, Yoshi operative. Obviously, that was the easy one to kind of put together. Um, I had either a Yoshi envoy or a Lashunta envoy um, with either Icon or the Xeno Seeker uh, with that. Um, then I had a human um, pilot. Um, but uh, you mean with the uh, ace pilot? Um, and uh, on the class, it was kind of he was like, I had mechanic, but I didn't know if that was like necessary or not from that perspective. But mechanic, like I said, it, it from what I read, it seems like it's more around computers and stuff anyway. So, well, that sounds like something that we could use in the party now because that, that's where we're gonna get a lot of the investigative stuff, I would guess. What was the last one? Mechanic. Because I was thinking, if he wanted to take me on, boy, I could see me doing an Android operative or something like that. So so, so now we're back to zero. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, Adam, Adam, like I said, these were all ones that I was willing to play. Um, so I'm totally fine playing like the human pilot mechanic role. You, you want to be washed? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, right? Or that's almost Han Solo as well, right? He fixes his own shit. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So, so that was that was an option. Um, obviously, human is an easy class. Um, although, I, obviously, um, from a race from a race perspective, you know, I mean, you know, the other the other character that kind of came to mind when I read Yoshki was. Our little furry friend in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. Oh, yeah, totally. absolutely. Yeah, like a Yashoki soldier, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You know, like that, so that was another kind of like I, I was trying to like think of like okay, how do how do you envision this character, right? And you know, um, I mean, he's a pilot, he's a mechanic, he's a tinkerer. I mean, he's like, holy crap, he's like everything rolled in a one. He's like, guts. or is he the gutter? Well, he could. That's what I'm saying. Like, he, he, you could. Build that into whatever role you wanted, right? So, um, 
But like I said, either human or Yoshi, those are the two characters that I kind of, or, or the android. I was originally kind of thinking the android, and then I was like, this seems a little interesting how this android is kind of, it's not, like you said, Jeff, data, right? So yeah. um, it, it seems like it's got a lot of human-esque type qualities to it. So I'm fine with that pilot mechanic, and then I'll figure out which actual race it is, if it's, you know. Okay. So, Jeff, that you're going to do uh, operative? Uh, I don't know if I do operative. I don't know. I could have sworn you just said that you would do operative. I would know. I, did, I said that. Okay, good. But I don't know if I want to avoid operative more. Bob, we gotta come in on this. Come on. Okay. Honestly, although now that if he's not gonna be the envoy, then you might, might be go envoy. mystic or envoy. <laughs> I, I, I would encourage you to have an envoy. It's it's the operative is it's it's, it's the rope, it's the reskin rope. But but it also has tons of skills, doesn't yeah. it? It does have a bunch of skills, which we're really gonna need. I don't know. I don't know how the envoy stacks up on skills, though. Okay, I think uh, Jeff, if you keep envoy, I'll I'll try operative. All right, that'd be good then. All right. Do you have so, a race in mind? Uh, okay, that's the next item. <laughs> I just want to make sure, do we actually settle on classes? If Soldier, Operative, Bob's Envoy, Mike and the Mechanic? No, no, mechanic? Jeff, Jeff's the Envoy, Bob's the Operative. Oh, okay. And yeah. Mike and the Mechanics. Do we have, do we have no magic? <laughs> do we have no magic? Hang on. What's that, Mike? Mike and the Mechanics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, like, it's not like... You don't need it. Yeah. You don't need a, you don't need a tank. I don't you don't like how. I don't, I don't know. Oh, but you know what? You can multi-class. Uh, so th this is just like D and D uh, three point five. So you can take one level as an operative, and then when you level up, you could take a level as a mystic. When Joel joins, he's already expressed he wants to be a healer. The mystic has both kinds of magic. Oh. And you said you have an envoy, right? Yeah. So yeah. So we have healing. That's right. We're talking about magic, not healing. Yes. <clears throat> I don't, yeah, I mean, it's just another form of, I'm trying to think of when I built the Mystic Healer. So what we'd be missing out on, for example, would be, uh, okay, Detect Magic, which we can get with, if somebody takes Mysticism, it could probably function the same way. Uh, stabilize I, is just a medicine skill. I think one of the races is inherently magical. I think mean, Lashunta might be. Your best soldier, yeah. Uh, and I, the first level spells I wrote down were Mystic Cure, which is hit point healing. We've got that covered with stand healing, uh, damage, and as Mind Thrust is a damage spell, <clears throat> and Wisp Ally is a, a debuff on an enemy. Uh -huh. So it's yeah. not necessarily, yeah, we don't necessarily need magic. All right. It's nice to have, not a need to have. I mean, and that's we're not, I, we're not going to run into things that Josh isn't going to. Put us up against things that oh well you couldn't detect magic here so you didn't know that this door was going to open up into space. I would like to think uh, that yeah. Josh would work with us on that. <laughs> no, I'm a dick. <laughs> All right, guys, I try. I have written it down: Jeff Envoy, Adam Soldier, Mask Soldier, Bob Operative, Mike McCann. Now I need to get some races and themes. Uh, I'm I'm done. Uh, race Yoshki theme Ace Pilot. Sold. Okay, so mechanic Mike is mechanic. Yoshi, Yoshi, Yosaki, Soki, and you said Ace mechanic, Ace pilot, Ace pilot. All right, does so that take away from your ability to fix the ship in the combat, though? Well, that's just because he's an Ace pilot theme doesn't necessarily mean he has to be an Ace pilot role in Star Battle. Right. So, so in the Star Battle, you have a captain, an engineer, a gunner, a pilot, and a science officer. That's one more person than we have for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get through this stuff first. Yeah. <laughs> and it's okay. We can double up on races too. Yeah, you can double up on it. Yeah. Uh, Adam, Jeff, are you thinking Lashunta or Yasoka? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards Lashunta now. Okay. Lashunta. Dubai. So, I think uh, if anybody's interested, I would like to. Be connected to them, share the same race, um, and have some sort of backstory, even if it's not related. Um, so. Is it, is it just, like you and Jeff could be the Shunta brothers, but different sub sub races? Yeah, because they choose that at, 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 at a certain point in their lives. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Or uh, maybe we go beyond brothers. Maybe uh, 
person. Maybe we were subject it's to first. horrible experiments as children taken from our parents and we both managed to escape. Or you're the evil clone, like the TV show, living with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, Bob, I watched all eight episodes, and that show is effed up. Did you like it? I did. Awesome. I did. Okay. I did. More or less effed up in the boys. I mean, just like the, 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 the eighth episode, like I totally expected him to like blow him away and not the ending I was expecting. Agreed. I agree. It kind of Not breaks a few norms there. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, the other thing, Bob, too, if you want, uh, if you don't want to play that, you can play uh, a Yoshki, my brother, let's say. Um, and um, you, went down, you went down a dark path after our mother was mysteriously killed, and I kind of closed myself off, and I started playing with my machinery and tinkering and, you know. Yeah. I, you can, they're, they're kind of written as a, like a, like a, a giant pack, so you could be the same pack. I don't really be necessarily be the same. I don't even think they know who brothers and sisters are as pack mates. But, but I, mean, I mean, listen, rats breed like rats, right? So, I mean, you know, the same mother could have had like 700 children. Bob could also be an adopted pack mate who's been there since before you were born. And you just treat him like any of your other pack mates. He doesn't or have to. Just, or maybe I was an orphan and he took me in. That could be too. Or you treat him like dirt because he was the adopted one. <laughs> Right, or, yeah, he is the redheaded stepchild. <laughs> Mom always liked you best. You and the other three hundred of our pack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you guys ever see uh, Secret of Nin? There's a because oh, this, yeah. this is basically what we are. What you would be if you're a Yoski, right? You're just a walking, talking rat yep. that wears clothes. That wears clothes. Yeah. It's the Secret of Nim, just in sci-fi land. Uh, I have to double check and see what the primary skills of operatives are. It would be good to have a class that, I mean, a race that complements that slightly. Maybe uh, that'll decide whether it's Yoski or. Uh, uh, if your operative Yoski is like geared for that role. Yeah, it's your choices. If you want a, a lining primary stat, your choices are Android or Yosoki. Ah. All right, Mikey, we have a history of some sort. We've got to figure it out, but uh, okay. Yoski it is for me. Yosoki, Bob. Uh, oh, Yosoki, excuse me. All right, so I got Jeff as an, uh, uh, a Lashunta envoy, Adam is a Vesk soldier, Bob is a Yosoki operative, and Mike is a Yosoki mechanic ace pilot. So I still need themes from Jeff, Adam, and Bob. I'm loosely tied to mercenary. I think he might. if he's mercenary, he'd be wayward. Uh, maybe just trying to find somewhere else to work. Okay, so you're going with mercenary? The only reason I went mercenary is because it's plus one to strength. <laughs> mercenary for Adam. I think Jeff's going to Icon. I don't know. Uh, there's Icon, there's Scholar, there's Xeno Seeker, Spacefarer. All those things are interesting uh, to me at this point. Give me, give me a couple minutes on this one. Uh, can you guys remind me where I can find themes in the, in the uh, core book? <laughs> Themes are before they're uh, chapter two. Thank you. I'm helping to try to look that up, Bob. Hey, Bob, if you look, click the link I sent you. Twenty-eight. It's step three, and it gives the highlights of each. Got it. I just found it on page twenty-eight too. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Josh. I'm going to take a look at both real quick. There. So, ace pilot, bounty hunter, icon, mercenary. Got it. Okay. Come here, buddy. It's almost like I want to roll <laughs> to see if I need to pass a stat, particularly. <laughs> I put it in Where do I put my three? I will say Icon is pretty entertaining. The idea that you're basically a YouTube celebrity, an influencer on Instagram, and also an adventurer that records everything on the side. I well the envoy, I think. Yep. <laughs> I could have been big in the peace tree deal. You could be David Hasselhoff who brought down the Berlin Wall. Or you could be. Uh, oh, Come on, I Who's the uh, basketball player that's good friends with our uh, with North Korea? Uh, Rodman. Oh, Rodman. <laughs> Rodman. <laughs> that's right. You don't have to be good. You, I, have, to be, I, you have to be popular. I, I have. I have should be in quotes. You could be Fred Durst. <laughs> you remember him? Nobody liked him, but everybody knew him. Jersey Shorecast. Yes. Right there. Right? Don't be you. 
Bob, I could play your sister too. I don't mind. I don't care what care. I don't care what gender my character is. Okay. The only time that's ever happened was in for you, and that was just awkward all over the place. And Joel played the game. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I appreciate the offer, Mike. But I don't think we have to go there, but my friend. <laughs> if you want to go there, Mike, do it. And these ones are the hot ones. They're the sharp type. Oh, good. Yeah, because I was going to play female best, and I realized I don't know the difference. I mean, because otherwise, I mean, if we don't have a you know a female character, Jeff will never be able to ask what she's wearing. So that's true. Well, he knows what he's getting. Hey. So outlaw looks interesting. Uh, for uh, Yoski, yeah. is it Yoski? Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, Yoski. 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 Well, it doesn't matter. We'll we'll just get it wrong. <laughs> or right. We don't know. It's our world. We can make it up whatever we want to be. Yeah. Henry says he wants to be the icon because he is adorable. Aww. He says I'm going to be the icon. Everybody will know me. Checks my manager. Fuji <laughs> yeah. to his Andre the Giant. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, so Bob is still waiting on his theme, which is no rush. Uh, we're certainly, if you guys have character sheets, because there's no reason not to roll stuff up tonight. Let's roll stuff up. I might have one already created. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to roll them all in front of me. I didn't roll. I, I know. <laughs> I'm being a jerk about it. I think I sent Josh an Excel character sheet. Mikey, I will forward that your way. That I, I, I have it. Oh, you already have it? Yeah, he no. sent it. I think, I think Josh sent it to me, or somebody sent it to me. Oh, cool. And I got a bunch of blanks here, but you guys can't use them. Uh, and my apologies. I found a fillable character sheet that does some of the math for you, a fillable PDF. I should have sent that along as well. Well, I think we'll do that after. How do you want to do it? I However, remember. if you're going to do the paper, fill out the, the, the mechanical afterwards. Jeff's rolling up. Yeah, I did point five because I roll like shit. 14. Jeff is doing the, the rolls. Bobby. So am I. I'm going to roll him in uh, roll 20. Eight. We're rolling four d six, Mikey. Four d six dropped lowest. A range okay. is fired. Jeff just Eight. rolled. Jeff just rolled seven. Seven. Jeff just rolled a seven. <laughs> a five one one one. Oh my god. Eight. There's six of them this time. <laughs> Ooh, I think Eight. I just got a seventeen. Yeah. Okay. I will give you the option to take the point five if you don't want to keep those. No, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me one more roll. No. Right. Can I roll one for him? Let me roll one for him. I'll use my own dice. Mikey, the sad part is you don't get to roll for hit points. What's that? You don't roll for hit points. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. One, two, three. I know I have another D6. We just rolled a 19. Oh, he rolled a 19 on four. On, oh, mm -hmm. He's dropping the lowest. But that's still 17. That's two 17s and a 15 so far. Jeez. I really, Mike? No, that's Bob. Oh. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got you. I'm going to have to roll one again. Well, those are good. I, I rolled pretty good, too, but nah, not like Bob. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm lucky so far. Uh, here, comes a, here comes a lower roll. This is a 10. What do you roll for? Oh my god, just, just see if I can roll better than that. I rolled three ones. I'm not even going to roll that for the guy. <laughs> nope, I can't roll better than Jeff. So I rolled a 16, a 10, a 13, a 14, a 14, and a 12. Oh, that's not bad. Jeff rolled. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> 14, 8, 7, 8, 16, 13. 16 is all you really need for that primary stat. That'll. Yeah, you get a plus two bar. <coughs> but could I stand with a six constitution? <laughs> <laughs> we need you alive to keep the rest of us standing. To be fair, my constitution's going to be a ten. No, I, I might have small. been sickly as a kid. <laughs> oh, Mikey and Bob could be uh, sickly, one sickly and one's healthy. Oh, okay. like a caramel wrestling kind of thing. The wasting man, what was a caramel man? Yes. <laughs> Is that where it came from? Yes. I never put it together. It was in the uh, annotated. I never got to read the annotated. 
I did before my kids destroyed it. And it doesn't even help me that uh, to do a plus one to con. It just gives me a seven. Yeah, but the next upgrade is the next one. Bye. Bye. Did it come up good? Hmm? Did it come up good then? Yeah. Did you drink enough wine? No, I have a migraine now, so I should have more. No, clearly, we've had beer and scotch. I don't, I don't a Amy has craft night tonight. Oh. <laughs> so it's a full house. Bye. Wow. Did the camera move? That was another five minutes ago. Adam cracked the floor and the camera moved. Oh, it's okay. Let's move on to space fair and get a plus one to card. <laughs> you the seven. That is two plus one. Right, I'm so going to take this out so I can see the others. What, your lowest is con? You don't want to get strength to dump that? That's my seven. <laughs> <laughs> I need decent decks in. Uh, you need the decks in, yes. Dex for range. Add it to the point by Jeff Roll, Bob Roll, Mikey Roll. Now we know who the risk averse one is in this group. Or we just know who the poor roller is in this group. Uh, but I know I'm a poor roller. <laughs> Gotta know in the roll. No hold them. Well, all the time. All right. So I'm trying to recall uh, if I have. So I, I've got a couple of 17s to burn. If I make a 17 dex. Race points would add two, and theme points would add one. It's not possible to start with a skill, a stat over 18 for a first level character, right? Maybe the GM would allow you to reassign that one point elsewhere? Uh, maybe I'll just put the 17 elsewhere, um, and yeah. I'll, I'll maybe try to figure out something else. I've got a 15, so maybe I can put a 15 in for dex, and then the plus three sets it at 18 anyways. There you go. Bob will rock it well. He's going to roll shit for the rest of this. That is, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> All right, so just so everybody knows what I go, uh, what I put in so far. So my character has a strength of 12, a dex of, these are the base scores, a dex of 14, a con of 14, an int of 16, a wisdom of 13, and a charisma of 10. Nice. All right, and then your mechanic, uh, your... Your, your, your soak gives you minus two strength, plus two dex, plus two int. Okay, so hold on. So minus two to strength. It's my modifier there, right? Yep. Um, so I get, for the race, I get a plus two to dex. And then for ace pilot, I also get a plus one to dex. So a net plus three. And yes, and you get a plus two to int as a Yusoki. And plus two to int, okay. And you're the, you're, you're... Your key ability score is int. So you okay. want that. If you get that to 18, that's what you want. Uh, I just did. 16 plus you just told me I have a, a, a plus two for the race. Yes. Nice. Okay. So my new scores are strength 10, uh, dex 17, con 14, uh, int is 18, Wisdom is 13, and Charisma is 10. Are you doing this on paper, Mike, or are you typing it up? Uh, I'm doing it on paper, and then I'm going to put it in the spreadsheet. Just okay. so that I make sure I kind of filled in the boxes before I'm playing around with the spreadsheet. Sure. If, if everybody's doing it electronically, can you share it with me? Uh, yeah, as soon as I do, I, I will all send it to you. I'm, I'm using that one you guys sent. It's called Simple and Easy Starfinder Sheet. Yep. The Google... Uh... Is that the Google Drive doc? Yeah. Got it. Hey, Bob. Yes, sir. Don't, you can also be themeless for a theme and pick what you want out of that later on or look into that. I think it might be helpful to have uh, some sort of C underworld kind of connections. Uh, That'd be that might make things interesting for you for story hooks for later as well. Outlaw or Bobby had a problem. We could do that too. Uh, I was thinking Outlaw, but what was the other one you thought could do that? Bounty Hunter. Oh, Bounty Hunter. You, you could write it anyway. You, you could be a scholar who, you know, goes the wrong way looking for stuff. Yep. A Xenoseeker who imports illegal animals. Belk. 
I think outlaw for sure, and I'll figure oh. out the flavor. Close. Is that his name? Oh, you're just making fun of him. Oh, thinking of Indiana Jones. I know. Uh, All righty. Just roll that up. Ability scores. Yeah, you can still have his skills and feats. You work on your spot, you're just quiet. Uh, yeah, uh, I am trying to figure out the ability assignment. I've got a lot of good ones and then a bunch of mediocre nines and tens that I've got to figure out. Uh, I just emailed you guys a link to a fillable PDF character sheet that is just a fillable version of the PD of the character sheet that's in the book, if that's what you would prefer. Does it do the math for you? It does a lot of the math for you, yes. Uh, it says I need permission, so I just requested it. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know how to do that on my phone. No worries. I might play around with it later. Hey, maybe what's your Alright, so let me see plus two racial bonus I have two skills of their choice. So that's on top of the I guess I'll head skills points that I get for Wow. Five boy. So there should be I guess plus two to two different more to or the racial bonus to two more. Wow. Try it now, Mikey. Okay. So, racial we have trained only, class skill. Armor check penalty. I just stay away from this. <laughs> oh, these are skills, not your your abilities. Your skills, 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 yeah. skills. Yeah. You yeah, got to, it's working. Okay. Yeah, you may have to make a copy of your own Google Drive before you, you can save any edits. Modifier. Okay, that's fine. Plus Thank two. you. Yep. So it's ten. So I just I like I found it easy to look at and easy to use. Use those questions. Yeah, that's a pretty. That's a nice looking sheet. Actually, it's very similar to the sheet that I printed off. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, it's literally just a fillable one with math pre-done uh, of the one that's in the book. Actually, it's exactly like the one I printed off, except the one I printed off didn't have any numbers in there. Okay. Everything was blank. Nice. So I'm looking at skills right now. Okay. Yeah, skills are something we should probably coordinate. So I don't know when you guys are, are ready to talk skills, we can we can do Is that. Is that the next thing that I should be on? Uh, well, let's see. Uh, preparation, character, concept, race, race, team, team. class, apply class effects. Science skills, two feats. All right, feats haven't looked at. But I'll probably do the uh, initiative. Uh, initiative's a good one. Yeah. Greater initiative. All right, but then. So, the should I get plus two? Plus two feet per level or feet? It's just, just plus two feet start now. Right, where do we find that piece? That's what I'm back because I'm at the skills point too, right? So, so look up your race in like the page thirties or forties. Okay. Chapter three of the book, and it might be some kind of uh, thing there about them. So it's Mikey, Yure, Soki. They're going to be in the back. So I guess it's more, there's other class stuff. Okay, so, oh, I oh, that's right. These guys have the cool cheek pouches. Yes. Cheek pouches, Dark Vision, and Moxie, and Scrounger. Okay. Receive a pluck.
all we've got there. And uh, let's see. Mike, he's a mechanic. I'm never going to forget that, except for every time. Hmm. <laughs> so Mystic. Let's go back to soft and mechanic. Okay, yeah, so I think somebody fix that. Uh, Mikey, you also as a mechanic get a plus one insight bonus to computers and engineering. I think that I think that gets added to your miscellaneous mods. Okay. So a plus one into computers and then another plus one into engineering. Yep. Okay. And how do you? Where do you know? Where do you find the class bonuses if there are? Oh, class. Yeah. Class so is, that's what we're doing. Okay. Your class skills are. You could potentially get a class bonus of three to what is whatever your class skills are. All right. Page do we find the class skills on again? What's that, Mike? What page do we find the class skills on? Uh, it's on each character page for mechanic. It's sixty-eight in that table. All right, 68. Hang on, I'm not there yet. So I have eight skill ranks per level here. Plus, plus, plus your intelligence modifier. So that's 10. Yep. And I get two for the being a little shift to go by it. Was that 12 that I put here? And I can put 12. You get to, yeah, 12. You get you get 12 up there in skill ranks per level. And then where it says ranks. I don't think it's for level. Oh, okay. You can't have any ranks more than your level. Yeah. You can have 12 skills. Then. We're getting there. Slow down. Hey, listen, I kind of know the rules. <laughs> and I want to brag about it a little bit. Okay. This is just they receive a plus two racial bonus and two skills of their choice. So it's not a Oh, okay. So that would, be, start. that would be that would be mods. Okay. So I get a 10. <laughs> Ooh, bless you. Thank you. Okay, so for class skills, it says skill ranks per level four plus intelligence modifier. So... I can pick six of those, right? Uh, your intelligence modifier, you have an 18 int, right? I have an 18 int. So your modifier should be four, so you should have eight. Your okay. skill per level is, is eight. Okay. <clears throat> what you do is all of those, all of those, um, all of those class skills, like do you get the box ticked off next to them? So if you choose to rank in those, you get an additional plus three class bonus. Yeah, this so part's a little confusing. So, so I did a bunch so, of these. So hang on. So yes, what Jeff did is on his character sheet, there's a little check boxes next to the uh, skills. Yeah. Everything that's under class skill, you tick off that check box. Okay. That, that's just a marker. It doesn't mean you actually get and you don't get anything until you put a all right, so I should just I'll rank into I should check all these. Yes. And right. what, what yeah. that does is for everything that's checked off, you can choose that. It gives you no shut up. <laughs> it gives you a plus three class bonus. But that plus three class bonus is only activated if you put a skill rank into that skill. So you have to pick one. You have to put one into that skill in order to get the bonus. You, Correct. You, it's kind of kind of signify you have trained in it. Yes. And the <clears throat> so there's that column that's called ranks. You get to put a. You can go. You no. Your, your rank cannot be higher than your level. Level. And you can pick as many to rank in as you have skill ranks per level. So Jeff has ten. Skill ranks per level. <clears throat> Every level he can rank up ten skills. Okay. Or, you know, if you want to, you can save stuff. Like if you only want to rank up one every other level, for example, or you want to rank up two and not have that, you know, something like that. 
So, you so if I get to third level, I could rank. I could use three points to move something from, or five points to move something. From if you get to third, third level, level, you could go from first to third in a skill, but you cannot progress that past that because you're only third level. So your ranks per level can only. Be it, it does not get. It does not get harder as you get higher. You don't need more points to. Okay, three. it's not like to go from two to three, you need two. Correct. Yeah, you just from one to two, you need yeah, five. Correct. Three to four, you need two. Okay. Does that make sense to you, Mikey? No. No. Okay. If, if, if you go from one to three, it takes two points. Yeah. Okay, so I have I have eight points, right? According to my mod with my modifier for my right. Just pick eight. I get, I get eight skill ranks per level, so I can spread those. So so uh, those eight those those ones that are part of my class, I can add to those, or I can I can put them in any anything. Right, correct. You do not have to choose class skills. Okay. You can as I since we're only level that. one. But I already I already have miscellaneous modifiers from my class already. Those get added in no matter what. Okay, so like engineering, stealth, survival, and computers. Those are those miscellaneous mods, right? As long as you take a skill point of those, you get the bonus for your class. Miscellaneous mods you get all the time. Yeah, those are the ones that you read off to me in the beginning, Adam, right? Yep. Okay. So now I have eight class, eight ranks that I can add in. Yep, and right now because we're level one, you all your ranks can be no greater than one. Than one, okay. So you can either pick eight or pick less than eight and figure out where you want to put the rest later. Okay. And, and kind of this is where we need to coordinate because we want to make sure that we have, like mysticism should be covered, perception should be covered, uh, I don't know about piloting, maybe uh, computers. Well, I have I have piloting and I have perception as part of my class skills. So I'm gonna I'm gonna interject here. Stop meditating. Just We're pick it. Just pick the skills you want. We're doing Stop this meta. Meta. You, This is 100 percent meditating. Yes, that's why we're doing this. That is literally the reason we're doing this. Is no, to meta this portion of the game. The reason the reason we're <laughs> to make sure. Why do we? Why do we go around and talk about what we want to play? That's so you don't double up, which so you, you, so you don't get any of each way. But this is what your character. This is what you want character. your character to be. You shouldn't have to sacrifice that to. Okay. You don't know what I said. That's fine. Yeah, entirely. Because I think it would suck to have nobody with computers, or nobody with engineering, or nobody with mysticism, or nobody with perception. And then put the medicine take on it again. I don't know if we necessarily need to have all of them covered, but we yeah. need to have some key ones covered. That's all I'm saying. Right. 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 All the ones with the star and for three class bonus. How are you doing, Bob? Uh, so I think I figured out the uh, assignments of uh, stats, so I got that going for me. <laughs> Uh, except that I do one question, Josh. I, I think uh, and then I What's your question, Bob? Oh well, it, they don't fall on that bit to take them off. Only that uh, I would rather put a seventeen uh, to the intelligence of this character with the racial adjustment that puts it to nineteen. Uh, I don't want to put it anyplace else, so I'm just going to shave it off and. Uh, Take that 17 and make the racial adjustment plus one, so capping it out at 18 for first level. Uh, you okay with that? I think the math doesn't matter because you only get the bonus on the odd numbers. I mean, on the even numbers. Okay. So you can make it 19. It's not going to make you change your stat. Oh, but okay. If then I could do that if you don't have objection. He can get to that next bonus modifier leap. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. I'm happy to shave it and just put it at 18. It's All not right, a big deal. So that's my 10. Okay. Now I have two from my race. And, you, and what does it say there for your race? Remember. Those are two for my... Receive a plus two racial bonus to any two skills of, of their choice. All right. What do we think the two most important skills you got are? Bluff. Okay. So that goes with... And this mod. This mod. Looks like I have to pick some languages uh, according to this. So I imagine I'm going to pick the languages 
uh, certainly of everyone yeah. in the party. So uh, Vesk, that's yeah. you, right, Adam? Yes. And yeah, I, I totally overlook languages. Lushkin, uh, Leskin, uh, sorry, what is uh, Jeff again? Jeff is uh, Lashunta. Lashunta. Oh, we hired. oh, that's interesting. There is no Lashunta language. Oh, no, well, no, it has nothing to do with languages Bob wants to learn, no. Oh, okay. I, I, thought, I thought the war, the higher it was, the more language. We're talking about languages Bob wants to learn. So everybody, everybody has common, right? Yeah, you get your race in common, so you start with those two, and then if you have an 18 intelligence, uh, Mikey, then your character gets a bonus for additional languages. I read some of the Okay. Perception, medicine. But what's yeah. interesting is I don't I think Lashunta have languages, uh, I think because maybe they're telepathic, they have no language of their own. Oh, maybe. That is no I'm still confused on this skill thing, but I'm working for it. <laughs> I'm coming up on that next. Yeah. What are you confused about, Mike? Well, I, so, so you get the eight. So I, I have eight with my class, right? Yes. So and then I get to pick more. No. Uh, what, what those eight represent are uh, a potential plus three to the skill. You yes. Know? Okay. So, so, for example, I have uh, I have medicine, right, as yeah. one of my class skills. Yes. Okay, it's in based, so I would get a, my modifier, which is a plus two, right, in total for an, for an int. That's the ability modifier, right? So you go to the ability scores. My int modifier is a plus two, so I'd add the two in there. So what? You have, what, you have an eighteen int, right, Mike? What's that? Your intelligence is 18. It, it is 18 upgraded right after it's been modified. So your ability modifier for that is 4. Plus 4. Oh. So i got to fix that. So the minimum that, that's that ability should have is a minimum of an 8. 1 to get the rank. Well, if he spends three, the rank on it. Rank 3 for the class. If he spends the rank on it. If he, if he spends the rank on it. It's one. That's one. I said that. Yes. Then he gets three for the class. Yes. And then he gets four for his intelligence. Yes. And then he miscellaneous modifier. Yeah, after that, he gets death. So min is eight. Yeah. But you do have to spend the one rank out of the ten that you have. Eight or ten that you get. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's where I was. So the class bonus is three for all of those. Right. Correct, Mike. But, but that only happens if you put at least one rank into it. Right. Right. Wow, if I'm reading these rules right, as an operative, uh, you get a there's a lot of skill points. There's like 12 skill points on this thing. Uh, let's take o operative is pretty badass, Bob. Eight plus intelligence. That, that's why it was really hard to walk away from that character. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. That character is way overpowered. Dude, if you want to be a operative as well, you could just put skills into piloting and mechanics, and we could be double operatives. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I could always multi-class, right? Four plus. I know. Or even just changed operative now. <laughs> He's in class. That's the thing is, uh, because the operative is operative is a dex class, so it doesn't get as many. You know, your intelligence modifier isn't as high. So, Bob, what's your intelligence? It's going to end up eighteen. Your intelligence? I rolled two 17s and a 15. So, wow. And the Yoshiki have a plus two racial intelligence. Okay, yeah, so you're going to end up with uh, 12, yeah, 12 right? uh, skill ranks per level. Whew. Skill so, yeah. What do you got? Some little skull thing. Cats plus dog is bad. Cats not getting dog counters, dog shoes on it. Oh. And Adam, just to confirm, you invest, uh, if you're level one, you are only able to put one rank into each skill, correct? No more than one. Correct. No more than one. Yeah. Got it. So, my, uh, Bob, let's talk about what you don't want to pick. <laughs> <It'll be faster. laughs> yeah, agree. Actually, you know, if I look at the list of skills, oh, I see, there's a few more. Oh my god, two English writers. Yeah, they are. 
They're having a good time. Yeah, one of them never leaves. Yeah. But hard to find them. Ah, yes. Uh, is Envoy a charisma build? Because I think Operative has pretty high charisma as well. I'm wondering, who's our talker? Uh, I believe Envoy, you're charisma based, Jeff? Yeah. Yes. Okay, good to know. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if the operative is going to need that because the operative can kind of like do their own. Probably not. It's plus four. That's pretty good to the initiative. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's just a solid choice. No, no. I mean, I, I kind of have my opinions, and I don't, but I don't want to push them. There's something about like you're saying about long arms. It's it's a damage bonus. So you can basically you go from a D four to D eight. That's a big bonus. But if I'm trying to create better situations for you, you might not need that damage. Even though it doesn't, the envoy doesn't kick in until third level. I think is the is the math. Oh really? Yeah. But I'm fine with it. <coughs> yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the other classes other than mystic and soldiers. That's all I really looked at uh, in depth. You guys drink a vodka now? It's a lot of vodka. Having a vision problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, not tomorrow. Please. How are we doing on like science y type stuff? Uh, like life sciences, medicine, physical sciences. Uh, do we have anyone who is a scientist? I imagine maybe Mikey, your character, knows a bit about physical science, maybe? <coughs> Yeah, so physical science and medicine and engineering, I pretty much have covered for us. Okay. You make sure you want a computer's guy, too. Or two. You shouldn't If you're going to meta, I'm going to meta for you. <laughs> Wait, All say right. that again, Josh. If you're going to meta, say what? If you're going to make sure you have at least one computer guy. Yeah, I, I have I have computers. Excellent. So that, that's one of my, uh, my class skills. And it's also intelligence, which is a plus four. Oh, nice. And I also get a miscellaneous modifier, so hmm. I have seven. I have a nine total so far in computers. Very nice. I will I have, say I have a nine in computers, an eleven in engineering, an eight in medicine, a seven in piloting. So, so Mikey, are you gonna take the AI or the drone? I, I, I think it would be AI. I, I'm not really feeling the drone thing right now. Three, four, plus your ability modifier. Stuck at this. It's charisma. And, and Josh, can I? I'd like to reserve my right on that one because I haven't really read about the drone part. If you're okay with that, you can change it to three three sessions from now. I told you guys, we're Lord of the System. Make all the okay. stations change it. Yeah. Okay. So that that. I'm being a graceful, yeah. generous GM tonight. Class. Anything. <laughs> right. So we're, we're going to take it while we can. And it's on. Rec and it's recorded. And it's recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's the the train hasn't got to the station yet. Uh, you, you, then you do not get the class bonus. Right. So, Mikey, um, that computers again. You want to go over that math with me one more time? I just want to make sure that you're. Uh... Yes. So I put I put one for my skill rank in there. Yep. My class bonus is a three because it's a class skill. Yep. I have four for my ability modifier because it's in base. Yep. And then for mechanic, I have a one miscellaneous modifier. Okay. I wanted to make based, sure. based on what you told me. If you add that up based on my math, that's a nine. Sounds good. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure because uh, wait, one, three, four, one. One, three, four, one. Oh, I have, a, I have a one for my armor class penalty. Okay. All right, yep. and then if you, look at, if you look at engineering for me, Adam, just to make sure again, I, I put one in there so far for the rank. Three, because it's a class bonus skill. And because I put one in there for a rank, I get the three. Yep. Right? Yep. It's in based again, so I get the four. And that one, you told me, had a three miscellaneous modifier, so that's an 11. Jesus. Yep. Yeah, you, you got it. You got it, Mike. I just want to make okay. sure. I, I just want to make sure I'm following that logic right as I'm, as I'm doing these, so... 
Yeah, and I just want to do like a, a for example, uh, if for example, uh, physical science, is that one of yours? Physical science is also one of mine. That is one that I've added in, but I only have a six in that. Okay. Only a six. Yeah. Okay, I'm just saying, for example, Mike, you have medicine as a class skill. I do, yes. It's actually a bad example. Well, if you took, if you did not put points in medicine, you couldn't use it, period. That's what the, um, there are some skills that you cannot use unless you're trained in, and that's one yes, of them. the ones that have the little T next to it on the chart, on the sheet. Yep. <laughs> Let me ask you this question, Adam, quickly, just out of curiosity. Sure. So under athletics, yep. it's strength-based. Yes. Because I have a negative two to strength, and I only have a score of 10. Do I have a negative ability modifier in there or no? If your strength is 10, no. You have no pluses and no minuses. Okay, so that that's right. 10 is kind of the base that's a zero, right? That is zero, yeah. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, if you had an eight in something, like I've got uh, – my character has an eight intellect. So he has a minus one to – Computers, culture, engineering, life science, medicine, physical science. <coughs> all stuff you can't use anyway because those are all trained only. Right. It's it's interesting that the only skill that's strength-based is athletics. Yeah. Consequently, Mike, I took athletics. <laughs> <laughs> I picked them up and put them down. <laughs> You know, it's kind of interesting how many have wisdom, considering there's only one wisdom-based character class. Yeah. Uh, so, what, what, uh, oh, go what ahead, I sir. find interesting is that, so under acrobatics for the skills, Adam. Yeah. Do I have any any other than my other than the ability mod? Uh, because of my dex is a seventeen, so I have a plus three, right? Yep. Seventeen plus three. Yeah, that's correct. If you choose so to plus, rank in it, you get another plus one. And there's no class bonus and no miscellaneous mods for my race or any other theme or class, huh? Yep. Wow. Wait, uh, you're an operative? No. Uh, no, I'm a mechanic, ace pilot. Oh, ace pilot has a plus one for dex bonus, de dex based bonuses. Right or no? Well, that's that sorry, I got factored in, right? What's that? Your ace pilot plus one to dex is already factored in. I, I think that's already factored in under my ability score, right? So that that would be under the ability mod. Right. Okay. Henry. Well, I have the least acrobatics I've ever had in any character, I think. Sure. <laughs> like, I'm a rat that apparently stumbles over his own feet. Jeff, Jeff is temporarily choosing an improved initiative as his feet. With a caveat, he can change it before. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I'll give you all that option. So I got to do two more points here. Um, is life sciences valuable? Oh no, that's trained only. Well, but you can train in it. You can put a skill point in it. Uh, a rank, rather. Trained only means you have to have a rank in it. Probably do this. It does not mean that you have to have a. It's not a. It doesn't mean you has to be a class skill. Oh, okay, okay. Do we think life sciences are valuable? Yeah, where we're going. I mean, if we travel to other planets and we meet a new race or new plants or something, or we get sick, maybe sick is medicine, but if it's a, a new parasite that nobody's ever been infected with before. Okay. Have, have you been reading a... Uh, uh, that James Holden, what's it called? Expanse. The Expanse, Bob? <laughs> I would actually read the last one. I, I've read them all. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. But I think I in this the first case, two episodes of the TV show, and then I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, if you can make it to episode four uh, of the TV show, that's when you get Oh, yeah? Then it you gets know? good and it goes faster. So should I just skip past three and just watch four? No, that's the problem, though. you got to invest the time oh. for the payoff. Yeah. Okay. My all right. All right. Just look on YouTube and look for, you're going to have to look up the spelling, but look for Avasarala's. Just look for any scene with Avasarala. Avasara. Avasara? I think so. I thought it was Avasara. Adam or Josh, I'm not seeing any this under skills, this thing called profession. 
I got to admit, I don't understand what that is. All right. Okay. Because I'm, I'm trying to find anything in the book on it, and I'm not finding you it. Just write your profession in it, make it up, and write it in. Professor of archaeology. Yeah, like I know um, as a mercenary, I get like a bonus to uh, profession mercenary checks. I still don't understand what the hell that means. It's, I think the gym would allow us to rearrange skills at a later time if we found a. It's, <coughs> okay. Trying to rearrange. You know, does profession of running and hiding count? I mean. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, short of having, like, tape on the bridge of my glasses, I'm not really sure, like, my character is going to be much useful for anything else right now. You know what that is? That's, like, the um, the knowledge in um, Savage Worlds. It's, like, knowledge blank. That was the worst. So uh, I think I've got skills figured out, but you guys tell me if, uh, we've, if this makes sense, if there's other things that we should be focusing on. Uh, Acrobatics, computers, culture, medicine, sleight of hand, stealth, bluff, disguise, intimidate, perception, sense motive, and athletics. Can you do that in alphabetical order? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Acrobatics, <laughs> athletics, bluff, computers, culture, disguise, intimidate, medicine, perception, uh, sense motive, sleight of hand, stealth. <laughs> I think that's good. You did not take engineering, correct? Negative. I took engineering. Okay, so long as you got that covered, I think that'll come. In. All right, so let me, I I need to pick one more, but here's what I've got so far: mm. um, acrobatics, com computers, engineering. Uh, I'll give you one too. Acrobatics is a four. Computers is a nine. Mm. Engineering is eleven. Life sciences is a five. Medicine is an eight. Physical science is a six, and piloting is a seven. I have one more that I can take. Perception, sense, motive. Uh, you said you've got perception already, right, Mike? Um, no, I don't have perception. That's probably a good one to take, huh? That's the uh, Savage Worlds rule, right? Always take perception, but <laughs> yeah. But how many of us have perception? I have perception, but mine's pretty bad. It's a three, even trained. So mine would be a four trained. Anybody got better than a four on perception? That's a wisdom check, perception is. Envoy? Yeah. <laughs> you got wisdom? He's too busy having a side conversation at the moment. Oh, okay. But he's talking to Josh about the game. Sorry. I didn't no, mean, that's sorry. all right. That's... <laughs> I, I think I'll leave it up if you guys want to do it now or you can do it on your own equipment purchasing, weapons and armor. I don't think we need to sit through that tonight. Unless you want yeah, to. You got, a, you got a thousand credits or whatever, right? So thousand. Thousand. Thousand, yep. Yeah. You're all light armor, right? Yes, I'm light armor proficient. I'm also weapon proficient in basic melee, grenades, and small arms. Ooh, grenades. Like you you could literally Use grenades as your primary weapon. Oh. Uh, yeah. I do okay. not have proficiency so, in grenades. That sounds fun. So just a, just a couple of thoughts, guys. So um, I, do we need someone stealthy? Because I can be a six in stealth if we need that. I think uh, I, I've got some stealth for sure, but it might make sense to have two people stealthy. It's that or it's that or I, I take perception, but I'd only be up a four a four in perception. I'd rather you be stealthy than observant, because if they don't notice you, <laughs> then you don't need to see them. Right. Yeah, Pladius, you've got a pretty good. What, what does it turn into if you train uh, stealth? Uh, it turns into a six. Dude, trade stealth. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I have light armor. So what is the leather armor? I, I will tell you guys, if you have light armor proficiency at level one, just take second skin. It's an armor type. It's basically, okay. uh, it's like a, a second-skinning armor. You can I've, wear read it. About, I've read about that. Yeah, it's EAC1, KAC2. Max dex bonus is five. So you're not going to lose any dex bonus. So you're wearing a unitard. Pretty much, under your clothes. 
But it's the best armor there is at level one. Best light armor at level one. All right, so the second is going to cost two fifty. Well, make sure let's, let's let's first let's finish health and resolve, then um, initiative, uh, and saving throws. Okay, I haven't done any of that yet. That's fine. Okay, if everybody's got an eighteen in their primal with that, you have four five resolve points. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, what, what was that? Oh, what, say that again. If you have an eighteen in your primary stat, yep, you have five resolve points. Okay. Resolve points is uh, primary stat bonus plus half your level. Okay. And I have six stamina points. How do you figure out hit points? Uh, you only have six stamina points. Oh, you have a um, you have a zero uh, ten con right. So I'll play I, have, I have a four, I have a fourteen con. Okay, so you should have, and you're a mechanic, so you have eight stamina points, six plus your con modifier. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right. And as a mechanic, you get six hit points plus the Yosoki two or four uh, hit points, which is two. So you get eight hit points. I hear you guys name. Eight hit points. Okay. That's what uh, I've got for uh, mine as well. So everybody ends up with five resolve if your primary stat is 18. And so yep. how do you determine its stamina points again? Stamina is on your class. It's, your class gets a base amount of stamina points uh, plus so con modifier. Plus con modifier. Okay. Yeah, so if you have a good con. Oh, so, six plus con modifier. I see it. Yeah. Okay. So I have eight stamina points. And then for armor class, you gotta buy your armor and stuff yet. So I, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna get your armor. If you, you get second skin, yep, I'm just gonna get second skin. It's gonna be your EAC bonus is one, your KAC bonus is two. So it's pretty, that plus your desk, dex mod. And if you have any miscellaneous mods from class or race, because I don't know about what. I know, I don't You're know. You're the rules lawyer. You're supposed to stuff. I'm not the rules lawyer anymore. Uh, yes, you are. No. There is no other. You're the rules lawyer. I'm going to do a lot of looking that shit up later. It's a big book. Yep. We'll look it up later. So if you've got if you've got armor proficiency, light armor, is that a bonus? or? That's, where, that's, that's what allows you to wear the second skin. Okay. Which gives you your, your one EA and two KA. So we should all be about 13 or 14 if we have a decent dex. Yeah. Decent dex. Yeah, if your dex is 14 or 15, you'll be at 13, 14. To throw numbers out there. Okay. Yeah, pretty confused. Yep. Oh, it's plus a, with a base 10, and then you add those extra stuff on top of the 10. Yep, correct. So, okay, That's so if you're very fast, you got the plus 4 dex, and you use second skin, the EAC bonus is 1, your dex bonus is 4. That's a 5 plus the 10 puts you at 15. I guess so wait, say, say that again, Bob. So you start off with a base armor class of 10. Yep. Then uh, if you have second skin, the EAC bonus is 1. And yep. then if your dex is 18, that'll be another 4. So if you're super fast, you have a 15 armor class EAC with second skin. Okay. And your KAC will be 16. So I have a 14 and a 15, because I don't think I have any other miscellaneous mods. What are our base teams? Those At are least not yet that I've read about. Those, it's, uh, it's just a table in your class. Saving throws. All right, saving throws are class based. There's a table on your class that tells yeah, you what I'm saying. Four dash two. So my base attack bonus is zero. My fort save bonus is two. Yep. So base base save is zero. Uh, no. Well, there's the three different saving throws. So, Mike, your base fort save is two. Your base reflex save is two. Your base Wait a minute. Where is that on this sheet that you sent me? Below armor class. No, no, no. Like, one says, so it says base save, ability modifier, miscellaneous modifier. Right. So, base save is what you're <coughs> Base save is <coughs> Your base <coughs> save is shown on page 69. Yep, so base save is a four. Where are you seeing that? Fort save bonus two and ref ref save bonus is two, plus two. Yeah, oh, no, that's two, two. 
two, and then you add your ability modifiers to get the total. Okay, so each of those base saves is two for those. I have zero for Will. And then the ability modifier, so I have fortitude is con. I have a 14 in con, so that's... Plus two. Plus two, and then dexterity, I have a plus three. And then you would know from if you had any miscellaneous mods, I'm guessing. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I just I just happen to look yours up, Mike. No, no, so I'm trying to figure out. Like, I, I, it's under class, right? So you'd be able to. Well, miscellaneous mods can come from race, they can come from class, and they can come from um, theme. Theme. That'll All right. Be about it. Henry, quiet. Henry, things go bump. Not a light. There's like things that go bump in the night too. Does that happen to any of us? Hmm? Do any of us? True. I bet he's a lot more sensitive to it than us. I know when a chair is moving. <laughs> he's doing it. True. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow I'm gonna to go back and read what you guys all chose. I read the envoy, the soldier, the operator, the mechanic, the Ibsoki, no. the vest, and the lashunta. Can you tomorrow. type that into the chat window, Josh? So uh, I will. I will write. I'll do a write up for everybody tomorrow. Okay. Take a look right now in my one notes there. I have no idea. Resistances are. I think those are like uh, things. Are resistance elemental resistances. Yes. All right. So at this point, I just want to make sure we're ability scores are done, skills are done, health and resolve is done. Armor class is done, assuming second skin. Saving throws and initiative are done. Uh, is there uh, initiative and saving throws? I'm sorry, I was uh, trying to figure out archetype and specialization. Uh, page 61, you said, was saving throws? 69 is saving throws for the mechanic. Uh, it's just a table, Bob. Got it. So I just go to the class page for... Yeah, 93 for you. Thank you. That gives you your base attack bonus and your saving throws. I see it. All right, I'm not a big fan of sorting through a thousand languages. I'm a big fan of the Universal Translator. If you guys want to play languages, we'll chip play on my collar. If you guys want to play languages, we will play them. Um, but I'm okay with hand waving languages as a, as a thing. Do any of you have telepathy? I do. I do not. Just the Lashanta does, right? Not me. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Jeff, we're all like, all right. Uh, excuse me. Well, we can see how it plays out. If uh, we run into races, you could try a language thing, and if that doesn't yeah. work out, we can. There'll, there'll be races outside the wall. For them, I would expect that you have to have a helper mm -hmm. or something, or, or the language similar to them. Or an envoy. Yeah, so. I was gonna say, you know, um, you guys could fill in your attack bonuses as well, because the weapons just have to deal with damage and stuff like that. What's the BAB? Base, base attack. attack bonus, which is based on Bow. your class. That's what Thanks, Joyce. It's like when you say Bob, but really American. Bad U T O D. Base attack bonus plus zero. I got it. So it's right now. It's just your ability modifier. That's helpful because my strength is a seven. Well, you're gonna be fight, you're fight range anyway, aren't you? Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> you don't want a minus one to hit all the time. Simple melee and small arms. Small arms. Yeah, Bab is base attack bonus, which I think for all of you guys is a zero. Correct. That's good um, for no, me at least. Oh yeah, the operative is a zero. That's kind of surprising. All right, who, what's the best, uh, let, let's save equipment for another, you guys can do the equipment on your own. We don't need to spend the whole day on the equipment. I would expect for your equipment, you have your armor, your weapons, uh, you don't need to go crazy with any, with, with a whole bunch of stuff. I don't expect you to buy light hard boots, iron rations, and a backpack. Cable. So what if you... Braided metal, braided steel cables. That you gotta buy, you gotta buy your rope. Okay. <laughs> or you could just get that for Sure. Uh, Feats are a thing. Cable. Yeah, feet. Thank you. If you guys want, we can do the feats discussion offline too. That's you know, there's so many to look at. I'm fine with doing it that offline. We don't have to poke through those. I did want to talk about some of the house rules that I wanted to implement before we, you know, just, super Gosh, just, so, just so you guys know, I'm I'm not doing the drone. I'm doing the brain implant as under my mechanic. The AI. Oh. Okay. The AI, just because I, I think that'll be easier to start with since it's a brand new system. Sure. 
Yeah, for, for me, anyway, I'm cha I'm I'm technologically challenged, and yet I'm the mechanic. Yeah, it's it's kind of like from what I understand of that, it's almost like you mark a target, and you get a plus something, plus one to hit with it, roughly. Yeah, your eye zooms in on it, and and the interface interfaces with your weapon. I see. I see arrows, but I don't see anything to shoot them with. <laughs> well, you're trying. You're gonna use a gun with charges. Does he say you use a bow? Really? Oh, maybe. Well, there's a bow. I do want to track ammo. Are there any complaints to that? No, because I mean, I was reading in the thing where it talks about those batteries and that the batteries are basically shots, and it sounds like we have to, Josh. To be honest with you. I would, I would like this too. I know it's going to be a little tedious. Uh, no objection here. I think uh, sometimes that can be kind of interesting when the bad guys are firing X shots and you're counting them down. Or, yeah. Yeah. I think what I'll do... As, as long as you're willing to have the bad guys reload as well. Right. No, the bad guys. I mean, we have infinite ammo, but we need to reload the weapons in our mag. Well, you're char you're, you, you'll have X batteries with X charges. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got to like, recharge our batteries and stuff too? Well, isn't there like there's all sorts of extra gun stuff you can do like you can do full auto and expend your entire battery at a massive blast so you do that and you're out of ammo but you get a big starburst in before you do I, I would expect you to buy or have a couple of at least two batteries or cartridges whatever they're called um, with the appropriate number of, of points per and that you know it may be as simple as printing out a sheet full of numbers 1 through 10 or 1 through 20 and crossing them off okay you know what I mean? Seems reasonable. Right. Yeah, no, I, I'm good. I'm totally good with tracking it too, but I mean, it's it sounds like we really have to. I mean, based on the way this, these weapons work. Yeah. One well, one thing is, I see there's just looking at the small arms. There's cryo, flame, laser, plasma, projectile, shock, sonic, uncategorized. So, what's the chances of me we get in a, in a battle and? I, ha I happen to have the uh, projectile, semi-automatic pistol, that we find that. Uh, I would call the charges apart charges. Well, that that, that semi, it's just a regular. Like, no, that one's like, like a nine round, it comes in nine round capacity where lasers you, come in 20 charges. I will say, when you're looking at weapons and armor, don't forget there are levels. So we're kind of stuck with level one. That's so we got a shock, a projectile, a laser, a flame. If we want a flare gun, I don't think we uh, want to shoot. Could be fun to burn people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Mike. By the way, yeah. Uh, what do you think about some kind of accent for our for our creatures? Or or a prop. So oh, um, I, I got a list of stuff. Sorry. All right, all right, let's I got go. a list of stuff I want to talk about. I'll let you guys take your gun before we get that. Do you guys? Yeah, have, we, can, we can. Let's work on that, Bob. I yeah, like yeah. that idea. Think about it. Think about more? it. Yeah, a prop, an accent, something. There, there is things I've learned about how to play a Yosoki versus how to play. Like they're supposed to be kind of like highly energetic, nervous, excited. Hmm. Like a high level of Yeah, you're supposed to be like four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, do you guys have any questions about your character sheets that uh, we still need to address? No, I, I think I, I think I'm pretty good at this point. Um, if I come up with anything over the next day or two, I'll email you and Josh and the group. Um, I think what I'm going to ultimately do is, Josh, just for you guys, is I'm going to translate this into that Excel or that PDF that Adam and send it back to you guys so you can definitely, you know, have it or double check it or whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll share mine out as well when I find it, finalize it. I got to do a couple of tweaks. I don't think we need two pilots. So we play next week, so we do have to get this stuff kind of a short, shorter term, just mm -hmm. to keep it in perspective. Um, so the, this this is to pay attention to Josh part. Yes, this, the start for next week is you. The, the four of you will arrive at Absalon Station on the same shuttle. You have something to do with the Starfinder Society, and you'll be meeting somebody in the dock. You are more than welcome to work around that if you want to tell me about it. 
if you want it to be a bigger thing, we'll involve everybody so everybody can play toward that. Uh, I would actually feel the camera. So a couple of things that I'm thinking I'd like to do for combat. 15 seconds to declare your action. The resolution takes as long as it takes. If you don't have it in 15 seconds, you're delaying. And don't forget to delay and start finding and moves your place in the initiative order permanently for that combat. But, wait, wait. What if I... No. Can you repeat you that? Clarification of... So I, I would like to try to have... In combat, you have 15 seconds to declare your action. Um, yes, Bye. See you, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deal with counting squares and moving and trying to figure out how to get the bur best burst or blast or any of that nonsense. You gotta tell me what you want. You can so figure that out. You got 15 seconds to say what you're gonna do. Yes. Okay. And by the bar point, in, in some cases, you can pre-roll that. Even better. Um, all our guests are leaving, so hold on a second. <laughs> Bye. 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 Um, I do want to implement a Benny's thing. I'm going to. Okay, Rachel said it. I'm going to go make sure she's fine. Bye. Bye. You're hosting. Yeah. As always. We'll yes. have to do our uh, Geek Squad for the Tears Miss Party. Oh, we prefer Nerd Herd, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, after Thanksgiving? Because, yeah. I mean, obviously, Thanksgiving. Right. So we'll have to have Texas start trying to plan okay. for Christmas with our squad. Oh, that would be good. Let's do that. Yeah, that was fun. Okay. I had fun with that. Yeah. Uh, Russell Brown, we'll be fine. Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. I would like to implement the Benny solution. Um, you'll probably start each session with one. And roll over any you have. You start with a minimum of one, roll over what you have. And you can either use it for a re roll or a plus one to an existing roll. That way, if you fall one short, I'm going to give you the option to push that a little bit more to get there. Okay, so wait, we can use these for what again? Either a re roll or a plus one to an existing roll. Okay. And, uh, if, and you can't stack them, you can't use three bennies to get plus three. Got it. And if this becomes too abusive or too powerful, we'll, we'll, we'll scale it back. Easy ways to get a Betty. Talking in character. Having a prompt. If you want to provide me a hindrance, playing the hindrance. Ooh. Okay. All right. Um, I want to try to keep the tech at the table to a minimum. Obviously, if you're on call or you need to converse with your wife or you're checking in on Andrea, that's a different story. Bob, I think you'll have a laptop at the table because you're going to be running the projector, and you may choose to roll that way. That's your call. But I can do my character sheet on my phone, and I can roll no. dice. But I can roll dice on my phone, too. No, you don't want to do that when you told me that. I'm trying to work with you, man. It'd be in a pain in my ass. No, I'm trying to point out examples of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. Like... Say that again. Like we can't be on our computers? <laughs> yeah, especially you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's going to be a really tough game for me, just FYI. Just yell really you loud. Better yell loud. real loud. I'm going to get a megaphone. Uh, Josh, question? Yes. Uh, can a Benny be used for a flashback? Um, I'll think about it. Maybe. Yeah, we'll, we'll have that discussion. We're also going to have um, the newest book that just came out, the player operation, the character operations manual or something, allows for downtime activities. So we'll look at that too. Uh. Hey, oh, what's she wearing? What's that like? I said, hey, what's she wearing? Well, we're looking at, there, there's been some expansions to some new books that have come out. Yeah. When we're looking at uh, weapons and armor, are we looking at everything or are we just looking at the core rule book? For level one, let's just look at the core rule book. Okay. Going forward, we can we'll expand that if we want. So CRB only for weapons and armor at the moment. Yes. For, for level one, core rule book. Um, Obviously, let's try to do our. Adam and I both watched the video from our favorite YouTube guy about being too meta and playing stuff at too high a level and reading into the game too much. Oh God! Let's try to see if we can wheel some of that back. I, I will say, trying to not meta after watching that video, it's really freaking hard. 
Yeah, yeah Professor Dungeon Master. <laughs> it's really hard to not just assume your character knows everything that you know. Like, yeah. like uh, when we were playing in uh, in Bob's campaign and we had that big battle to kind of break the time loop, or what we thought was going to break the time loop, and there were the Russians outside that said, oh, we are here for, uh, Bradford. for Bradford. Like, I was just going to go, oh, these are bad guys. And then I realized, no, wait. Doug doesn't know that. Bradford's never told anybody about these guys. <laughs> Doug probably thinks they're just here to help. <laughs> and that oh, was and that was absolutely Bradford. hilarious, Adam. <laughs> We're all inviting our friends, but like I gotta admit, it was really hard to think of that at the moment. Like yeah. I think that we've gotten so used to just automatically knowing everything in the, character. The black leather trench coats and Uzis didn't uh... They were there to fight with us. Okay. So, so <laughs> it's, just, it's it's something you've really got to pay attention to to, and, to be able to. This might be a case where Benny would be an appropriate reward. If you point out to me, you know, I want to do this because I know, but I'm going to do this because it's what my character would do. Because they, I, I think if we if we kind of focus on the, this is me talking versus yeah my, hopefully not Irish, English or Scottish accent. <laughs> Character talking, you know. Well, you say one way to do it is to, if you only speak in character, yep. then you know you don't have to worry about it as much. So um, we talked about tracking ammo already. Uh, one of the other things was uh, racial stereotypes. So if you look in the book, under each race, it says playing them like for Jeff playing the Shinta, you likely, other races probably, and that's how they see you and how you see other races. So. I, I want to try to have you guys play that way. And I want to try to treat you that way. I will submit this, but I will Wait, try. What, what page? What page is that on? Does anybody know offhand? <laughs> With, and, on the first page for every, first or second page for every race in chapter three. In chapter oh three. yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, now I know what you're talking about. Okay, page fifty-four oh. for us in the top left corner, Mikey. Okay. Yeah, fifty. Uh, fifty-five, top right corner, Bob. Uh, 55. Yep. Oh, sorry. It's uh, the PDF just does yeah. one after the other. So yeah. I'm looking at the actual page number, not the PDF page number. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mentioned already combat resolve via role playing, particularly smaller, non necessary combats. I may even give extra X XP for the group for that. Ooh. Just help us avoid that. What was that last one? I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't listen to anymore. Um, if you want to bring a prop, I'm going to appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Adam was gonna wear was gonna wear his little, little antennas. Antennas was the same as Sharon. Talked about hindrances. We talked about Benny's. That is all I have right now. I still need Jeff and Bob to pick their themes. Did you settle on I did. Uh, Zeno Seeker, Space Fair, Space Fair, Space Fair, and Bob's uh, gonna let me know. Outlaw, pretty sure. What was that? Uh, it's gonna be out Outlaw, Josh. Okay. All right. I just realized desks are freaking um, Klingons. The lizard men. They're Klingons. Whatever. They're reskin Klingons. So. Um, are we assuming we're from our traditional planet, or you think you don't have a traditional planet? Well, Aikian, right, is where the race has long been a vibrant and respected culture. Possibly. Let's uh, let's you and I talk. Uh, okay. See if we can come up with an interesting backstory. Yeah, keep me copied on that. We'll do. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. Um, so nice, sweetie. Nice, sweetie. No idea. <laughs> 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 I'll wait for the name. I'll get the whole thing. You, but he's not an awful anymore. He's a drunk. Drunk. <laughs> <laughs> he's only had three beers and a glass of whiskey. I know, we do good. Why did you put only in columns that should mean something? <laughs> so, you guys got anything else? I wanted, to, you know, I don't think we just spent two more hours hashing this stuff over. I think we did. A good, we got a lot done tonight. I just, I, I would like, I would like to not repeat the mistakes we made in four E, where combat took forever, initially because we were trying to figure everything out before we did our turns, and I know that's what the fifteen second rule is going to address. But it's kind of, and I know that's going to suck the first few weeks. I expect that to slide the first few weeks. But I also think I don't uh, think it should. With limited magic helps out. I think for me, when I'm picturing my character, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take four. 
time. You know what I mean? Like to uh, <laughs> when you might end up once you move up in advance, you're going to be done in well, two and a half seconds. The, the battlefield you know? changes, but what I'm thinking is, it took us a while to figure out what our roles were in combat and how we could synergize when we we're playing 4e. I think in this, instead of doing it at the table and taking forever to do combat. We do our best at the time. We can kind of hash it out later in, in like email, so that we take that that it really is meta game that that combat meta gaming and just move it away from the table. Sure. I still want to do it because I love to and, synergize. I don't want to take forever for freaking. We, we, we might have three examples of combat in, in a night, and then we can go back and look at what worked, what didn't work. Yeah, I, right. I just think that'd be better because like I love the tactical of 4e. I hated waiting an hour for my turn to come up, and everybody waiting an hour for your turn to happen. <laughs> Once a night. <laughs> exactly. We only played for four hours. <laughs> but the other three times my turn came up, it was resolved in about a minute and a half. Yeah. I moved up. <laughs> anyway. Uh, do you guys ever, what do you guys want to see out of the game? What do you want from me? What do you want to try to improve in yourselves? You know what I'm saying? What, what don't we do? What did Bob do that I, I Bob said yes. I'm not a great at saying yes. I want to try to say yes more. I know that. What what did Bob do or not do? Or what do you like or not like? What do you want to see? Uh, I think, again, watching a couple of those videos of, like, the, the guy gave the example of which guy, Professor, uh, Professor DM, said, like, you, you can have somebody, like, there's a uh, in up, up ahead what do you guys do? I'm moving the camera quickly. Yes, I will be in and, all that. It, it would take us 45 minutes to open the front door. You know what I mean? Where the DM could say, you guys approach the inn, you enter. There's uh, locals sitting around the uh, bar talking. Uh, you go up to the manager and you ask him if there's any rooms for uh, sale or for rent. So that, that is called, he, he defines that as moving the camera. I plan to move the camera to help us move things along. I, I will say, too, we need to let Josh do that. <laughs> yeah. Instead of giving him shit about putting us on rails, let him help us move, move us along. <laughs> and, and, no, I mean, those, those types of things I, I, I agree with, right? I mean, you know, to Jeff's point, I mean, taking 25 minutes to decide if we're going to open the door to the, to the end <laughs> is is beyond incredibly painful when you're sitting remote. Just FYI. <laughs> you, you, you I can't even begin to tell you how many times I wanted to hang up on you guys. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I mean, I will continually give Josh shit about putting us on the tracks, but I don't consider those tracks. Okay, good. Yeah, right, like, so say, for instance... There's, there's a point you're going to be at Absalon Station and you're going to have the choice to do what you want to do there. And I'm going to give you 10 or 15 or 30 seconds, and if nothing comes up, I'm just going to drive it. I'll drive it to get you to where you need to be or to some other spot to have something happen. I would say, too, if we're trying to figure out what to do and we're kind of floundering, have somebody approach us, force us in the right direction somewhere. Like, I, I've come to realize... Or give you options. Years, yeah, I've come to realize over the years... The tracks are there for a reason, and we should we should embrace that a lot more than giving I, I shit think, for it. I think it needs to be more like there's a tracks that split, and I should be giving you a couple of options where you don't versus not having any where too many options. You don't know what to do. I should be giving you two or three to choose from, and I think that presents a better solution for you. So, to, to that point, Josh, we're our own worst enemy, though. I mean, in all <laughs> seriousness, you know. I mean, you, tracks, no tracks, options, no. I mean, seriously, I mean, I mean, I'm not even making it up. Like, there are times where we spend 25 minutes, to, you know, standing in the road, deciding if we're going to turn left or right. <laughs> yeah, and, and neither, if you look at the map, neither made a difference. Yep. Yeah. All right, that's fine. So, we'll so do to, to, to Adam's point, um, yeah, I'm totally okay if, like, some guy comes out of the shadow and is like, "Hey, you guys, you know, go, go just freaking go left, will you?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna say move the camera. I want to say multiple tracks, not as sandbox. 
That is yeah. not free. Because you know what? You know, if, if we're talking about this Benny thing and you're asking us to try to be out of the sandbox, um, and, and I will try that because I can be very sandboxy. I know that. I don't want to give you guys the option to play in the sandbox, but I also don't want you to wallow in the sand. That's what it really boils down. Make it a sandbox, not a quick sandbox. Right. So yeah, yeah. Let, you know, we, you know, we're not a bunch of ostriches, right? Nobody needs to bury their head in that box. <laughs> so All I right. just want to confirm then that the we're using a like a pre-generated adventure module. It's not like we have a ship and we can explore the galaxy and go wherever we want. There's a an adventure kind of planned for this, so we shouldn't go in assuming we can just book a ship to the nearest system and then go explore it. We, we're probably going to get clues, and then we should follow the clues. In, in this case, yes, as we learn the system, once, we, once we've established that we're comfortable in the system, if we want to scrap this and move on to, I'll roll, I'll, you know, I'll make some trash and we'll, we'll completely play it loot, free and loose. But right now, us learning the rules and deciding if we like this, I think it was more important than me creating an original content for us. Sounds good to me. I understand. It's good you know, to manage expectations. But at the same time, like I said, if you, I, I would, I would love if each of you sent me one something that your character is trying to achieve or find or solve. I want to find my lost brother. I want to, you know, I want to become a member of. Give me some to believe me. I want to, oh, Lord, whatever, the stewards or whatever the stewards of the Jedi of this world of this. Of this um, so, what what else do you want from this? I, I think something that I want is I want to remember to play my character beyond the first session. Because <laughs> I, I always come into these with these... I don't have a character idea for this one yet. But I always come in with these interesting character at least interesting to me. And if they're not interesting to anybody else, that's okay. <clears throat> I don't push it on anybody else. But <clears throat> I come in with a character that I want to play... And then two or three sessions in, I'm just playing myself. It is so easy to play yourself. So, so should we come up with some adjectives to describe yourself, to describe your personality? You know, actually, on the character sheet, there is a section, I believe. For traits, right? Description. Also, right description. I, and, and not everybody has it. This is a goal for me. I should fill that in so I have it in front of me. And I can refer to it and remember to be this character. And I think a proper voice would help with that as well. And that's how you get pennies too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm going to say, I'm going I'm to give it as part of your homework, besides getting your equipment. I would like a physical description from each of your characters and a short, it can be like three sentence background about you. Give me a little bit of something to work with or a description of you. I'm, an, I'm a jerk. I'm short tempered. It's something like that. That way, and I'm going to keep that as a note. When you do those things, or in a hindrance, if you want to give me a hindrance. Yeah, the cool thing about those Savage World hindrances, if you wanted to use that for inspiration, they're pretty universal. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I will mention, the, the if you still have the character sheets from um, the last campaign, there's a, a table with every single hindrance from Savage World and then a whole bunch extra. So you, you might be able to pick and choose from there, too. That's right. Mikey actually sent me his character sheet. Thank you. Nice, Mike. Yep. One for five. Teacher's pet. <laughs> One for seven. <laughs> well, you know what? Actually, Jeff, I have a tendency to lose them, so it was a much safer <laughs> bet sending it to Josh. Do uh, it with us, uh... <laughs> so I saw his email, and I was like, oop, attach, send. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Bob, you've been pretty quiet. What do you want to see? Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, playing a character and, and having some fun. Uh, I think the parts that are most fun for me are when we are interacting with each other as our characters. Um, that That's always sort of the most interesting. So if we've got a good background, we try to not be ourselves, but be whatever characters we end up being. That That's cool. So, I, yeah. I say for me, the highlight of me being a GM is when I give you guys something and you just beat yourselves up about it. <laughs> when you guys spend an hour debating the ethical merits of something, I've done my job. Uh, oh, as 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 you know, uh, okay. Left or right. Yes. Yeah. yes, when you have a legitimate discussion about an action that is going to have ramifications. I want to have I want to have one of the things I like, and I know Bob likes it too, is when you do something, I want it to have ramifications longer 
term. Like tying up children? Like tying up children on a, <laughs> on a, on a, on a, on a, on a cruise ship. On a boat? I, 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 did, I did it to, to Tyler. It's like... You tied him up? The, these orcs approached this party, and he was ready to roll. I know they were there to talk. And it's like, yeah, but they're orcs. We're supposed to attack and kill them. Because, and they were looking for a share of the uh, mine uh, wealth. You know, like, and it's put you in a weird situation, kind of just different than you're used to. And, and I might add, uh, I think something that may help uh, get us into those situations is if we're not all getting along all the time, if there is not a, a level of conflict that destroys the party, but just enough to create some interesting eccentricities or quirks or some a little bit of infighting, uh, just creating a little friction makes things kind of interesting sometimes. Like, like how many times Mike shot me in War of the Dead? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, well, I'll show you I'm more. Gonna defend, I'm going to defend tying up that child still to this uh, day. And if you guys look at like the, the vest, the vest could certainly view the Ahsoki as vermin. Yeah. You, you could certainly talk down and degrade them all the time if you want to do that. I, I have a I have a vague notion that that my character will have probably multiple hindrances along the same lines as you know arrogant, uh, xenophobic, condescending. Yeah. What? So, uh, it's you, the dragon board again. <laughs> But just you know, to talk down to, okay? I'm not sure if you know that or not. <laughs> and I, I think, I think, on top of Adam playing himself, um, <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to, uh, and and hopefully, you know, I mean, I I, I realize, and I first of all, let me, actually, let me back up. I appreciate you guys letting me continue to be part of this remotely, um, since I live now all over the world and i'm never you know uh back with you guys you know physically there very often um so i appreciate that and i'm gonna try my best to kind of stay within this character because like adam I, you know I, I you know the first two or three sessions i feel like i'm into the character and then like I, all of a sudden i'm myself <laughs> and i find that it's easy to revert to myself because being remote, it's really hard to be in character hmm. when there's five other conversations going on there. So, so I'm gonna make a note here: no side, let fewer side conversations. I was, I was gonna say, and I think Bob brought it up too. When we have conversations with, within our characters, amongst ourselves as characters, my goal, and I want to say this out loud so you guys will hold me accountable, is I want to try to speak only in character. It's going to be really hard for me because I'm not going to be able to make those stupid quips that I make all the time. And you guys will love me not doing that. And the best intelligence is an eight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, so that be similar. Uh, <laughs> can I make a can I make a point first on something? I, I I don't know if I want to lose some of those quips because some of those quips are kind of fun. Agree. And I think that's I think that's also what makes our group pretty awesome. <laughs> okay. I, I you know it's it's. Intelligence is probably the hardest thing for me to RP. As as a, as a player, you know, I I want to use. There's a puzzle in front of me. I have an eight int. My goal, my job is not that. My job is to go beat up, hit things with a stick. But as a player, I can't not look at that puzzle. I, I will tell you, there are times when I'm totally okay with metagaming the puzzles. I will absolutely metagame every time. I have an eight int. Maybe in social encounters or in. You know, if, if like I realize that hey, we might be able to do this better if my character can't figure that out, then you know maybe I'll let it play out. But if it's a hey, we have to solve this to move forward, I'm totally just going to solve it. Listen, I, I'm going to tell you guys, I am so far out of my comfort zone playing a character with an intelligence of 18 when I have an intelligence of six in real life. <laughs> so not true. Man. I am glad that you went out of the box of what you normally play. And that you're not just playing Rudy, like some people are playing, maybe like you might say, Ekarath again. <laughs> <laughs> so just FYI, if there is a puzzle, don't look to me to figure it out. In real life. Uh, this is coming from the guy who uh, trained himself up as a paramedic, uh, as well as uh, thrives in the corporate world. So that, yeah, right? that kills me. I don't know. Not just thrives in the corporate world, a highly specialized sector of the corporate world. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the good news for you, Mikey, with the clips and everything is that I know I will fail. 
but hopefully what my, you know, I want to... Just don't say with your accent, you're fine. Well, that's the thing. It's, that's part of it. But if I do that less, it will help cut down on the crosstalk, and maybe you can actually hear what's going on a lot more. Yeah, and you know, it, you, I think actually what would... I mean, and don't get me wrong, like I said, some of them are very fun, and, and they're totally enjoyable. It, okay. you, know, you know what I think would make... Like, if we can figure out how to do this as a group, this would be cool. Like, those quips within character... Like oh. towards the other characters, right? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Is, 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 is smart ass a skill? <laughs> it's not. Uh, it is smart ass. Is that a hindrance or is that a skill? Which one is yeah, charisma, yeah. intelligence, or wisdom, though. That... Anyway, I, I don't know. I mean, we're all a little smart ass ish. Anyway, um, so. I, I, you know, I think we can roll that into the game and make it have fun and, and make it part of the fun. I like that, Mike. I think it's a fantastic idea. Because, <laughs> like I said, I, I hate to lose that because although it does sidetrack us every once in a while, um, it, it's it, it's kind of fun to to watch it, how it happens. Put on investment is definitely there. That's we might, we might have to invest two minutes, but it's worth it. Yeah, and, and like I said, if we can figure out how to maybe do it in character, like to the other character, and make it fun that way, I, I don't know, that seems kind of cool in my opinion. I really dig that. I, I think that's a great challenge. I think we can do it. All right. Is there anything else you would like to see from a play perspective? Yes. Mike, if we're, you're not having fun and we're sapping your energy, speak up and say, stop, to, stop uh, ordering breakfast and just let's move on. Okay. I, I will do that. I give you permission to tell us to shut the fuck up and move on. Okay, I, I, and I appreciate that. You know, it, it's hard. It's hard being just the one guy remote with the five of you there. You know, it's I don't I don't want to be that. Uh, I didn't want to be that guy, right? Oh sure. I, so, I can you guys will be right back. We, we could use we could use that guy. Yeah, be, being being at the table and checking out a lot too. I'm, I'm not there all the time with you, but I bet you a majority of the time I am. We, okay. we get out because we're not paying attention either. Yeah, and that's that's you know those kind of those things that, that are killing you, they're not just killing you. <laughs> Kill us. Too. Okay. All right. <laughs> like I said, this this has I, I don't know this kind of has the potential to be kind of fun. I you know I kind of envision this is very similar to like the Firefly world, um, where you know. Maybe we get to make our own like season two of Firefly out of this. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I I can see. I'd like to see us play this adventure path either to completion or for at least three or four months, and then like it enough to start over with something new from scratch within Starfinder world, Starfinder setting. And, yeah. You know, but we'll see. I think this is a cool way for us. We not only get to reinvent and play a new game and a new system, but I think we can. I think we, this gives us an opportunity to, like, we're talking about how to play now, reinvent ourselves as a group as well, because... Uh, 12 years ago, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Adam, that's totally fair, man. I'm with you. <laughs> I think I think a session zero is a good start. It's something we haven't done in the past. We did a little, I think we, we didn't do one with Bob. We had a lot of email with Bob. Yeah. So it was kind of a precursor to this, but I think it's it's good. I wish Joel could have been a little, little more involved, but he's got, obviously, other priorities right now. I think I don't think Joel would be. I think he'd be on board with all this. So I'm gonna write all this up and I'll send it out and I'll copy him on if I want to keep it in the loop. Um, and, and, and Josh, you know, like I'm gonna be honest. I, I know you. I know you guys kind of sent that email out, kind of apologizing that you, like you guys felt like you just kind of decided to go down this road. Yeah. Uh, and, but you know what? I, I I actually think it was. I I think it was a great choice to kind of go into a, a, a different kind of. Game system rule set, although it's still all D twenty stuff, right? But just you know, to, to Adam's point, right? Just kind of reinvigorate it. Sure. I, I, I don't feel like we got railroaded into kind of this game system. So, thank you. That makes you feel a lot better. Yes, I felt really guilty once I realized what we did. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. I, I didn't. I didn't. Honestly, I didn't feel that way at all. And. Like I said, I, I, I would have been totally fine, like, you know, jumping into D&D &D or whatever we wanted to jump into. But, um, I, you know, like I said, I, I, I actually thought about characters and I wanted to try to be something different. Like I said, as soon as I saw that character and I was like, oh, everybody knows what I'm going to play. 
<laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate you going against that. Yes, I really do. I, the fact the fact is this, this is that this is you know in the past when we look at what we've played and Adam and I are working together to talk about this a lot. We do fantasy great. We've all done those, that trope for a long time. We did yeah. present day pretty well. We did Weird West poorly. We did ETU poorly. We did a lot of things that sounded great, but we did them poorly because we didn't have background in it. I thought Deadlands actually was really good. I, I didn't. I didn't think that was I, poor I, at yeah, all. I agree with Bob. I, I I agree with Bob. I don't think Deadlands was yeah. done poorly. I don't think we were in it. Long, I don't think we were in it long enough for it to be poor. I think what we did in Deadlands was good, kind of pre-adventure. Looking forward to going out to California and all the ghost rock, I don't know if we would have done that as well. It's hard. Because I looked at that and I went, I don't get this and I don't know how to play it. I, I read that whole adventure path and it was so outside my experience and capacity as a GM that I would have struggled with it. I would have still have to go through, back and try it at some point in the future because I think it is a great fun to play that. It's a, it's a very well-respected Superman setting. But I think this is a great place for us to go right now. We're familiar with the tactics part. We haven't played crunchy tactics in a while. And we're familiar with the trappings of sci-fi. Yeah, and we're familiar with sci-fi. That's yeah. true. I think it'll be yeah. good for us. You know, and, and maybe and maybe that's it. Maybe, Josh, I just didn't read enough into the Deadlands to realize that it was going to be kind of that way. But I don't know. It, 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 it felt kind of fun. You, know, you, probably have more, you probably have more background than any of us. I just realized what it was with Deadlands. We kind of started it off as a little bit of horror, a little bit of travel adventure, which we could do. We actually did the horror yeah. one fairly well that time. So shock the shit out of you. Uh, <laughs> in retrospect, I think once we got into Weird West, that's you know that's where it would have been bad because we weren't really playing Western too tightly. I don't think we have a, as a group have enough experience playing Western. Who how it? Yeah. I was saying, if, if we were to play Deadlands, we'd actually have to have like a couple of weeks of just come here and watch Western movies. Yeah, right. Watch spaghetti <laughs> westerns for a couple of weeks to to understand the Western genre. Better. Just watch Briscoe County Junior. Yeah, I have. I mean, I you know I, I kind of wonder. I mean, like you know, short of like the original like 4E that world that we played, you know, I almost kind of wonder like is our group better in the you know, shorter, you know, play multiple different kind of um, adventures within a, within a, within a rule set instead of just staying with one. I mean, there are guys that have been playing one game for 20 years. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. That's something right? that boggles my mind. That well, makes you know, me almost want to shoot. Myself. You know, it is most of them, they play in, and they play in a world. A lot of them play within that world. They'll have a, like a guild with multiple level characters. So we're going to have, a, a low group, a mid group, and a high group. And the high group may go out and do something stupendous, right. and then the, the, the smaller group for a series of adventures, where what the higher group did dramatically impacts the, the lower level guys. So they've been playing this role and building this role for all these years. So they have in depth first person knowledge of so much of it, and now when they have these other characters that they have, they impact what happens. But I think like even like five E is so rich in what you could do, Starfire. So like. I think we talked a little bit about this. Like, when was the last time you saw an elf cleric? You know, you, you know, like play a different character, play a character for four months, and then yeah, you know, advance it a little bit, advance it from maybe second level to fifth level, and then move on and, and build. Because there's so many different types of characters to build, and we end up making the same ones. Like, like Tyler and I, we're, we're playing. It's like, all right, let's make a ranger. Every single time it comes out as a half elf ranger with a swashbuckler as the uh, a, a theme, or, or in it. See, and, 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 and it's look, too easy to do that if, yeah. if you're if you're going to get married to that character. But then, if you're not married to that character, do you have the same interest level? That was that's that, tough. That was the other thing I was going to say. I mean, Adam and I, I think everybody here spent a lot of time on their four E character, spotting out that path. Sure, as you never saw me. So, so you know. 10th level, 15th level, 20th level. Yep. Level to know these are the all, this is where I'm going to be. This is how I'm going to get there. This is where I'm going to be. So I was great to do once. I never want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of with Adam on that one. I, I, I almost kind of am on Josh's page. Uh, I mean, on Jeff's page of, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't know if this world works where, 
you know, it, think of it like a TV show where every uh, episode is a different adventure. Yeah, and yeah. All the characters are there. Find we we gotta we have to find a way to use our skill sets differently for each of those adventures. Well, here, here's I mean here's like I said this is a, this is an adventure path. It's first through twelfth. You know, path, Starfire technically goes to twentieth, so we're not going to be seeing the upper echelon of ridiculousness for our people. Probably a good thing. But everything I've seen is after six level, <laughs> you become superheroes that yeah. are no you fun. Know, it, it, that's when you can't do your move in 15 seconds. You can't get through it. all 12 things that you're going to do. And if it, just, if it starts to turn bad, we can change our characters. We can change the setting. We can change the system if we really wanted to. We have options. We and I think this, this setting is untouched by us. So we, we don't know that we should be a dwarf cleric, we should be a half orc fighter. You know, like we don't know. We see, we see what the hey, we chose no humans. <laughs> up. We chose no humans and no typical, no fantasy humans. tropes. Yeah. no fantasy tropes. No, and I, I think that was great, right? I mean, we didn't pick any of the because I mean, all of those races are there, right? You can go pick an elf character in this world, right? It, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem to make sense, but they're there. Um, and so I am kind of glad that everybody picked one of the new, you know, races and, and you know, things like that. So, um, did I send it over or did I just send it to you out of the combat video? I don't remember. You, so said, I said, well, you said on YouTube today with I that. I think you sent it to everybody. Okay, so what I, haven't, I have not gotten to watch it. Adam did watch the first couple. He said they were good. Um, we play... The, the first one is uh, level zero, uh, like, okay, hit point. Yeah, like, but it's so far. You put on one point two five speed or one point five speed. And <laughs> it, go from there. The two and a half videos I've watched, I've learned at least one thing from each one. Okay. Uh, so we play again next yeah, week. There's still stuff there. Bob, we gonna see you here. Uh, it's all gonna depend on uh, how she's doing. Uh, definitely remote for sure, and it's just a question of whether I'll be uh, in person or not.